ahead of the National Executive Committee meeting of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, a group of 60 federal lawmakers from the party has demanded the resignation of the acting national chairman, Omar Damagu. The group under the umbrella of Opposition Lawmakers Coalition want Damagu to step aside to pave way for another central candidate to emerge as acting chairman pending the conduct of a national convention. They also said the alleged doctored list of local government caretaker committee of the party in River State and 10 other states allegedly filled with all progressive Congress APC loyalists be nullified. In response, the minority leader of the PDP in the lower chamber, Kinsley Chinda, in a statement asked the group not to misinform the public. He also said the coalition is unknown to the National Assembly. Immediate resignation of Elmar Iliyo Damago as acting national chairman of PDP for anti-party activities and allow North Central produce the acting chairman as clearly stated in the PDP constitution or watch us reconsider our membership of the party in the months ahead if the writing is not done. Or removal of Omar Damago by the neck of the party with further sanctions against him for anti-party activities. Three, that the neck of the party should ensure that the list of party caretaker committees in River State and all the other 10 states tampered by Damago and his APC friends are reversed and announced as originally agreed. That is by extension of the tenures of the outgoing leadership. Damago should not continue. He should cede that position to the area that it rightly belongs to. The rains have come too early, but rather than raise our hands and complain, we will use the rains to water our fields. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by Honorable Ikenga Ugochinere, member representing Idato Federal Constituency in the House of Representatives. He's also the spokesperson for the Opposition Lawmakers Coalition. Honorable Ugochinere, you're welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. Um, where do we start? Um, you, you're a man of controversy. You must agree. You're always in the news for one reason or the other. Isn't it so? <laughs> it depends on who is interpreting, but stating facts the way they are uh, doesn't mean that uh, you're a man of controversy. It is those who doesn't want to accept the truth that makes it to look like it's a controversy. So why did you hold the press conference yesterday? I'm, I'm not talking about the substance of the matter yet. Why was it you? that held the press conference with your colleagues. You, you seem to be the arrowhead of the group. I'm not the arrowhead of the group. Uh, the state of the nation brokers coming in the next few weeks, you will see the arrowhead, you see uh, the leaders and so on and so forth. That um, a group of like minds and colleagues decided that I should speak for them. I don't think anything is wrong uh, with that. Maybe because I have talked on such platform even during the larger coalition before the election. So it's not, it's not in personal, it's uh, a decision of our people, yeah. But you seem to enjoy talking, always being in the, in the middle of the, of the storm. When there's no issue to talk about, you don't see me talking about uh, any issue. It's only when there's issues that has to do with uh, things that I believe strongly about, and when things are going wrong, then you should expect that I'm going to talk. This project <coughs> by your colleagues, the coalition, do you think or do you believe that it will go anywhere? It's already going a lot of places. In the last few uh, hours, series of meetings have been held, all aimed at finding a sustainable solutions to the challenges. And before now, these issues have been going on internally, just that the key players uh, never wanted to listen and allow a uh, you know, uh, good thing to be done. So it's going to go a lot of places because uh, stakeholders have been meeting and the right thing will be done. You want the acting national chairman, Omar Damago, to resign his position. Why should they listen to you? We want him, not uh, we. And you need to understand, constitutionally, we start from the first phase. Uh, with the exit of uh, a year to IU, the provision of the party constitution says 
that the replacement should come from the zone where the former occupant originated from. That has been our constitutional uh, tradition. And apart from that, if you look at even when uh, uh, Secondus left, even though he went to court, the party still went ahead to do their zoning and also their convention. But in this particular case, the position has been zoned to North Central. So with the exit of uh, a, a HRA, even though he's in court, the replacement, the acting chairman, should come from North Central. So what Damagu should have done after assuming office as the acting chairman by virtue of being the deputy national chairman of the party was to summon a NEC meeting where the North Central would have produced the acting chairman of the party. This thing shouldn't have been an issue. It's just that people have learned to do things the wrong way. It's something that is natural that you should have allowed the North Central to produce the acting chairman a long time ago. Even if your child later wins in court, the acting chairman will step down just like Damago would do for him to take over. So, but you took it, and this is almost going to a year now. And not that you are so fantastic, with all due respect, I uh, won't mean word here. Not like you are so fantastic that you have been able to unite the party after the election, been able to identify why we did poorly, you know, bad at the election, been able to reconcile stakeholders, and been able to put the, part on the, the party on the path of sustainable growth. You just took the job and you went to bed. And then the party has been without a leadership for a long time. Many things have been going on in the state chapters and so yeah, on and yeah, so, so forth. You, you, are you, you are correct. You are correct that Damago, according to many party members, has overstayed his welcome. He has refused to call neck meeting, which he should have. But with this group that you're pushing for his resignation ahead of the neck meeting on the 18th, um, why should anybody listen to you? Because some members also say that your group, you're just a bunch of rabble rousers. How would you respond to that? Well, these days we have a lot, it's so unfortunate that PDP is facing one of the most challenging moments where you have what they now call PDP APC. Those who are in APC and proudly members of PDP, they can always rant any nonsense, but that doesn't bother me. The most important thing here is, is the party running well? No. Is the man supposed to be in office constitutionally? No. What is the state of the party it's in deep mess? And now we have gotten to a point where over 19 or there about state, state executive are uh, expiring, and then you have a man that is in bed with APC, so turning out chaotical lists that are populated by members of APC. Should that should I keep quiet? That's a serious allegation. You and made that allegation. Of fact. Yes, earlier yes. on. Yes. You made that allegation yesterday, yes. and you're repeating it now, that he is working for the opposition or progressive congress. Can you substantiate? that allegation i don't even need to go far in substantiating that he had been compromised you said there's a list it. yes can because you name of some all, of the people hold, in hold that on, list hold on hold on i don't even need to go further in producing evidence as a national chairman of the party have you been able to call a net meeting no which is a statutory responsibility almost one year because people are forcing you are threatening now we're going to have that meeting as a national chairman have you visited any state as a national chairman, what did you say when we lost power to our lawmakers that won election legitimately and people, you know, conjured certain things and then took it away? As a national chairman, what did you do when the same issue was facing Nemo? As a national chairman, what did you do when people were proudly saying we will put this party down and elect another party even in 2027? You are still having meetings with them. You didn't even do any effort. So the point is that if that you have not been compromised, what are you doing? Tell us what you have been doing. And again, stakeholders have been crying in the last few days when the issue of constituting the chaotical list of the states that have inspired. We received complaints. Of course, Google it, you see it, all the stakeholders, that the people that populated those lists are members of the All Progressive Congress and all those who are loyalists or working for the APC. And this alliance, we are, even before this thing went public, let me give you one information. There was a decision at the National Working Committee that these officers are the expression of their tenure. They will not turn them into a caretaker until pending the conduct of election. If there was an agreement, it's supposed to be holistic. But in almost about 11 states, these people turned up strange lists, which are made up of people who are not committed to the party. So what do you talk about? What evidence are you looking for? No, you have said, you know, that you are not bound to provide evidence, but you have to because you're speaking publicly about it. So you have said again that there are names of people that are from the opposition APC. Can you mention or can you share most, most some of, names most, with us? Most of these names, like in rivers where you have uh, one worker, so, on, so you don't know them, it's, it's a local government something. But our it party doesn't members, matter because this our party is, members, you're, on a, you're on a big hold stage. On, hold on, hold yeah. on. Our party members from those areas and lawmakers from those areas, when we sat at our meeting, listed this. If I know, I would have brought you the entire list of the 11 states. So, but the point that if you Google, you see that stakeholders are shouting that this list are coming from the opposition party. So the most important thing is that what we said, they should go to the original arrangement of having those officers as caretaker and not accepting an entirely new list made up of people that stakeholders have clearly told you these are members of the APC. But that's not even the main issue. 
This caretaker is not even the main issue. The main issue is that the PDP have no leadership assistance to the intents of having a national chairman that have the capacity to drive a post-election uh, arrangement where the party performed very well. And part of the reason why the party performed very well was there was high level of anti-party activity across different states, which you saw. So what would I expect that as an acting chairman since 10 months, you should have started the process of rebuilding the party. The party have no voice. You can see how opposition how activities happen in different parts of the country. Now, where is the PDP in Nigeria today? You mentioned River State as one of the states where there's this problem of other members or members from other parties. Can you mention other states? There's many other states. There's yeah, issue in Abia. For, for example. There's issue in Abia. Right. There's issue in Benue. There's issue in uh, 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 Kano. There's issue in um, Enugu and some other places where there are these complaints. So it, it runs in almost about 11 states. When we had our meeting before yesterday night with the stakeholders and the coalition members, everybody brought issues that has to do with their state. And he knows that there's issues in those areas. So what we're saying is that he even lacks the capacity to lead out into that critical arrangement. Our view, and which is the view of most members of the party, is at first, you are not supposed to be the acting national chairman of the party. What we should be having at the next meeting, which is in the interest of the party, and if there are still men who have still have boss and energy in that party, is that you lead us into the next meeting, the North Central will elect an acting chairman who will not start the process of rebuilding. The journey is still very far. The party has to be rebuilt from scratch because they have done a lot of damage because of this desperation and anti-party activity that brought into the party. The next meeting is coming up on the 18th of this month. It, it's just by the corner. Why don't you wait for him, you know, to run there, for the next meeting to happen, and then he can be removed. Why do you have to, why are you in a hurry? The most important thing you need to get here is, is that it's not like we're in a hurry. We've been talking about this for the last 10 months, and each time they will say they'll have a next meeting, the next meeting will not hold. How are we ensure that he will not but be But there's changed? a date now. Yeah, they, they have been dead in the past. It's not the first time we're having a date. If you have seen some people have already started getting caught order on individuals who should not even attend the meeting. So you can see all these funny things going on all over the place. But the most important, like I told you, is that whether he's stepping down before the meeting or stepping down inside the meeting, it is the interest of the party that he steps down and the unifying person comes on board, unites the party, start the process of rebuilding and disciplinary actions against those who boldly believe that this party must be killed because of their petty little interest. These issues have to be dealt with. And that is why when I said, whether he's leaving today, whether he's leaving on, uh, on Thursday 18, the most important that governors of this party, it is in their interest and in the interest of everybody in the party, likewise we lawmakers, that we have a national chairman who understand the responsibility of leading an opposition party, uniting an opposition party that is highly divided, and then setting an agenda that will make us to provide that kind of leadership to assured Nigerians. At that deck party, what are the odds against him? What if he doesn't step aside or they decide to elect him national chairman, although <coughs> it is zoned to the North Central? Well, I can tell you authoritatively since a day before yesterday, we have had meetings going on in Abuja where people are mobilizing some neck members to even give him what I call a funny vote of confidence. You see, some people don't want to understand the reality on the ground. Some people, as I speak to you now, are going around trying to see how they can mobilize people to even give him a vote of uh, confidence when he's supposed to be receiving a vote of uh, no confidence. And another thing I want to say, it's not a muzzle flexing issue. In whose interest is it that he stays? What has he done so fantastic that you re re require him to stay? There's no reason for him to stay. He should be honorable enough. The party have done him a favor. But I have done him a great favor. He has had 10 months. He should be honorable. I don't even need to tell him that he needs to give way for the party to have an acting national chairman who has that capacity to unite us. There's a lot of things that needs to be done. You can see what happened at the election. But if he chooses not to, like we have said from our own part, of course, you know, we have said it uh, yesterday. We are taking also the legal option. There are a series of op options and activities we have lined up. But to say we'll keep quiet and our party will be running with instruction from another political party, I don't think we're going to accept that. Are you crying more than the bereaved? Because as we know, there are other members of the party from the North Central Zone. The governor of the Plateau State, uh, <coughs> Caleb, there's uh, Senator David Mack, there's Bukola Saraki, there's Abba Moro, Gabriel Suswan, Babangida Aliyu. They are not at the forefront when, when of, this, you, when, of this some fight. Of the, some of these names you have already mentioned. 
are more than in the forefront by virtue of some of them already running for the position of uh, chairman. So why are they running for the, so who, for the who chairman? Is running? So, somebody like uh, Gabriel Susan is already running. People yes, are calling yes, on yes. Babangida Leo. People are calling on Bukola Saraki. People are calling on David Mack to step forward to help to rescue the party. So even before now, you remember, you have been on your station talking about the progress he has for the party. I mean, uh, so, so there's a whole lot of people. So from that North Central, we can find somebody that have that capacity to unite the party and set an agenda. There is no agenda. On the, okay, as a member of the party, somebody that is representing uh, either on the party platform. Do you know since we came on board up to today, we have never had any meeting with uh, the national chairman, the acting national chairman of the party. As lawmakers in parliament, nobody has even set an agenda for us. We are just moving around with, like ships without uh, uh, a shepherd and so on and so forth. And you think is right? Let me tell you one thing, my sister. Somebody deliberately, or some group of people deliberately, wants PDP to remain in coma. They want PDP to remain in life support so that they can present the impression that nothing can come out of PDP for them to satisfy their masters. And we're saying, no, the party is too big. You're too small to do that to the political party. And for us lawmakers, we, are, we, we, can, we can perform better when there's stability and unity in our party. And that is why we said we owe our uh, constituents the, the responsibility and our party members to speak up and say the right thing must be done. We're not asking for too much. You spoke about anti-party activities. And that's why you have, or you and your group have, have argued that Damagun should resign, number one. And number two, he should be sanctioned for anti-party activities. What right do you have to say that when the minister of the Federal Capital Territory, a member of your party, former governor of Cross River State, is also openly frolicking with the opposition, why hasn't he been sanctioned? It's, it's almost that he's in the same boat with Damago. Why hasn't he been sanctioned? Why should Damago be sanctioned and we cannot? If you listen to us clearly yesterday, we are very clear that those who played anti-party activities in 2023 should be disciplined. And we are asked for this. Damagu refused to do that because they are his friends. Some of them are also my friends. But when it has to do with institution building, there is no friendship for me. On this particular matter, like what the FCT minister is doing, it's very dishonorable that you are in PDP. What is the sense of being a member of a political party? To be able to set an agenda to win an election to change the lives of the people. That's why you belong to that association. You are right in that association. And then you say, I must kill this association. I must pull it down because I made a new friend in Bola Tinubu. Because of that, my party must die. I don't have a problem with choices people make. But you should be bold and honorable enough to just switch over to APC and work for as well the way you like. But to stay in PDP and proudly say it is the height of political uh, treason. And I say most people in PDP lack the balls and courage to say this. And we cannot move forward if we don't have the boldness to say, if you want to be in PDP, PDP, you be in PDP. If you don't want to be in the PDP, they, in the PDP, they kick you out. We can ha we cannot have PDP APC. It's not just him. This thing stretches across Lagos, Ondo, Abia. Uh, it's almost about 13, 14 states. By the same as the same group of people. We're not going to keep our party as a as a second option or as a extension of a, what they call it, a APC party. It's wrong. Even Tinubu, when he was in ACN, remember, even when he didn't agree with Tinubu, uh, Buhari in 2011. Even though people are alleged he must have worked for Jonathan. But there was no place he was junketing like a small boy, castigating his own political party. Nobody does that. You're supposed to, if you don't want to be here, you leave. If tomorrow I said something has happened and there's a legal reason for me not to be in PDP, I'll boldly go to anywhere I want to be. I can stay here and contribute to this. Most of these people have benefited immensely from this institution. I know that wherever the founding fathers of this party are, Solomon La Equipment, they will be crying on the kind of joke that is playing on the party national stage today. So can you tell us what your party is going to do about Minister Wike? Because it's also, you I have mentioned <coughs> rivers where the caretaker, com caretaker committee, they are, you know, adding or putting people that are members of the APC. So it's a problem for you guys. And River State is a big uh, party. It's not just, it's, it's I, a I big don't want you to make a, a reverse issue. Yes. These people doing this in course across, like I told you. But Ondo, specifically, Kano, Wike. And a, a lot of places. The most important thing and the critical thing that must be done, like I said, and I will repeat it here again, is that if somebody is in this party and say that I will never work for this party, I will kill it, what you would do is you remove the person from the party. It does not matter who that person is. And I, let me say this with all due respect to our governor. Some of them are my friends. But I must say this, you people are also not showing leadership. Because if it was in those days, I wonder what you people would see down a political party that was handed over to you people, you elected on that platform, and all this sound of discord and political rascality is going on, and you cannot come boldly 
and say, ah, you step aside and let's review what happened to us in 2023, be able to unite the party. Those who does not want to conform to law and order, you show them the way out. It looks like you people are okay, you have not been with them, and then the party has no headship, has no direction, and our people in the rural area who believe in this party are without leadership and they are suffering and people are doing the way they like. I think that they had decision. That what makes a man and what makes a political party is those hard decisions. You can't do this in APC. You can't do it in NDC, in Ghana, even though it's a position party. You can't do it in EFF. You can't do it in Senegalese opposition party. You see how these opposition parties are working wonderfully well because they all understand the responsibility of being in the opposition. But no, we're not even started the work of being in opposition because we cannot even put our hands in order because some people say you cannot move forward. We have sacrificed this party. We have sold the soul of this party to somebody outside the party. So therefore, nothing can work. And that is wrong. And that's why I said Damago likes the boss to take those hard decisions. Right. And we need a new leadership. If you don't want to confirm, then you give way out. You give out. If Damago goes, will Wike be suspended? That is not a decision for me to make. But like I said, the demands of the opposition lawmaker coalition is, is, is three. One is that he should step aside. Two, that the party appoints an acting national chairman from North Central. Three, that the party invokes his disciplinary powers to deal with those who are currently if they have not repented, sabotaging the interests of the party. And the party sets an agenda with which we can unite the party, reform the party, and set an agenda towards providing credible and, uh, and sustainable opposition to the, to the Nigerian political space. You are indicting PDP governors, saying that they're almost, they're literally doing nothing. What do you want to see from them? Come on. Growing up when I joined the party, even from 99, I used to see how our governors used to move up to the time of uh, the days of uh, Ibori and all the leaders and so on and so forth, to the 2007 days, the unity, the strength, and how when a national chairman is not doing the right way, the governors always step in to save the party. Up to 20, 20, 2019 or thereabout. Now we have a set of governors who feels, yes, they are like they are begging or they are appealing or they are asking somebody maybe calm down. No. There's nothing like coming down. If somebody comes into your house, he's a family member, he does not want to conform to the law and order, and he does not want to also show the most what he has done in the past, and then you are begging him, you are encouraging him discipline. The right thing, like I told you, is that first of all, the, the constitutional provision which requires North Central to take that job ought to have happened a long time ago. So we'll do it now. Then the second one is that we know that there are people who are still carrying out anti-party activity boldly that will deal with those issues. And then we set agenda, unite our party, and start rebuilding. By now, we should be having conversations conversation about are we going to form new alliance, are we going to form a merger, are we going to have a kind of political coalition arrangement to be able to give hope, to be able to put the opposition on the front line right. towards capturing central power. That's the conversation now. And now we're discussing about people telling you, I, I, I don't want this party to win a presidential election, I don't want this party to win a government. Some of them in Nedo working for APC and all that. I don't right. have anything against the APC, but once it's a political party, each is distinct, it is different. If they, they have no relationship with each other because they are pursuing dissenting. So we can't have PDP APC. You saw a yeah, video yeah, that is right. circulating. I saw some of them on your station. Why people who say PDP, they say APC, they say APC, they say PDP. These are jokes that have never happened since return to democracy. The minority leader in the House of Representatives, Honorable Kingsley Chinda, says that your group is unknown to the legislature and um, you are uncouth. What's your take on that? Um, Chinda is my friend, and I think I will uh, just advise him. I know the difficult position he's facing, being a very good friend and confidant of the FCT minister, who is working towards electing APC as the next uh, president in 2027. He, he needs to watch it here. He should be able to know how, when to draw a line between his personal political affiliation with the FCT minister and also the responsibility of also leading the opposition as the minority leader. And the minority caucus that he's leading is made up of both Labour Party, NMPP, and so on and so on. So yesterday, we didn't speak as minority caucus. We spoke as opposition coalition of PDP. So maybe he needs to go and watch that tape and be able to guide himself so that he doesn't make mistake in the way he was rushing to react. But more important, he should focus on the issue and it's also justified to Nigerians why he's the opposition leader and get the job to be done. He shouldn't bring any attack to me. And I say that out of respect for him because next time they will do that, they will not like what I will say. The coalition has threatened to leave the party if they do not get their way. Um, who cares? You know, are you even significant in the party? <laughs> why, should I, why should anybody care about what you have said or the threat if that see, you have issued? If you see those who were in our meeting, the lawmakers and those some of those you, you, you saw, you can understand their mobilization ability their capacity to win an election just like me and other people. So when you see a man who can win an election against 
any you know any doctrinal team and then you say of what important the important is that i can win election they can win election we are 60 of us that is more than half of the opposition lawmakers in the in the pdp so how can you say to her we who we, we, we would vote we can win election for you so we are flying your flag without us you would even have a, a, you, will, you will be taught on the line so the most important thing here is that yes we are very important we are very critical others are also critical but we can win election and that is the most important thing here and we are saying to save this platform it is important that the right thing should be done and i ask you are you proud the way the opposition in nigeria is working didn't you enjoy what happened in Senegal? Didn't you enjoy what hap happens in South Africa? Didn't you see what, my, uh, 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 what is happening in Ghana, NDC? If you know what is called opposition, this is a joke. It's not opposition. I, I can tell you that boldly. So anybody that is defending it is part of those people that belong to the PDP APC uh, arrangement, whereby your party cannot grow. Let's work for somebody. Maybe after 2027, we can rebuild. Even the man that are working for, I know President Aswaju Bola Ahmed in the Deco Chieftain, he will be laughing because in all his opposition life, he has never seen political charlatan to the extent that they will be jumping and say, let's bury this party today, tomorrow. He will not. So I can tell you boldly, without missing word, that the present leadership have no boss to rein in people and bring discipline. And also, he's occupying that position illegally. He should go to North Central. we we'll bring somebody who will unite us, rebuild us, and set an agenda, both in the parliament and outside the parliament for us. Well, um, the picture that you have painted is, is, is that Damagun is a very weak leader. Some people might agree with you. And then you said, because of this, your party is not a strong opposition that it should be. But remember that even before Damagu came on the seat, um, PDP was terribly weak as an opposition. So how is it the fault of Damagu? So are you not saying that we should continue to be under the bed? No, I am saying that PDP wasn't even a strong or viable opposition. Your, your leaders have been accused of living abroad. And then during the election, they come in for election purposes. You haven't provided the kind of leadership or opposition that Nigerians want. So it's not only the issue of Damagu. He came m much later. Now, and that is the point I'm saying now. Now that this has been our history for the last two, three years, and now we have performed even badly as a result of more internal sabotage and disunity. And now that people like us are on board, well, we don't used to be on board. Now we are flying the flag of the party in the parliament. Are you not saying that we should close our mouth because we have not done well in the past? Are we not going to rejig? Are we not going to wake up? Are we not going to try to work? Are we not going to try to set an agenda, reform the place, and be able to convince Nigeria once again that we can be trusted? I think that no matter the time you wake up, the most important thing that you have gotten up, what you now do with the time with you is what is important. PDP must wake up to their responsibility. They have a responsibility. And that responsibility must start with restructuring the party, with bringing the right leadership, with giving it to the right zone that it's supposed to go to, and bringing everybody on board, and also bringing in discipline. I can tell you today, if somebody is in APC, and is an officer of the party or a high-ranking officer, and he's saying APC will not win the election in 2027, I ask you, will they tolerate that? So why is people doing it to us? Because some people in the party, some leaders who are supposed to speak up also compromise. Some of them have relationships that have gone beyond normal relationships. And because of that, they are trying to put their personal interests above party interests. I am urging party members because when the hurricane will blow, you don't know who it will affect. Look at the one that happened last time in Southeast with Labour Party. Almost the entire place was wiped out. Is that what you people want to repeat everywhere? So you don't know whether it will, it will, it will, some of those people that lost in the East were part of those people who used to create problems in the past. They thought they are in charge, they thought they have the structure, but when they win, they came, we took them off. So let us wake up and find a way to reject the party and see whether if we are still weak, maybe we seek alliance with other political parties and be able to build ourselves into something that is very strong to provide credible leadership. We are not asking for too much. This conversation is not supposed to be happening because the right thing should have been to allow North Central to produce the acting chairman and to have a leadership that would have engaged not re re reckless opposition but opposition that is sustainable that you know contributes significantly to good governance and development of the country you threatened let me go back to your threat will you really leave the party if you do not get your way i mean where else would you go to well i don't want to use the word it's not a threat what happened is that the lawmakers agreed that are we now at the end of the day they say damago should remain or oh, ridiculously without shame give him a vote of no confidence and say we should continue to be pdp apc to satisfy some interest and then critical list of the party whether it's rivers whether it's cross river whether it's uh, uh, ondo should be populated by members of apc then i will ask myself why should i what do i need to be with you I should be able to find a place that has that moral standard and understand what 
political party is all about. It is not something you marry off to somebody. It is something that is supposed to stand on its own with its agenda and its goal. And then we said that if the party refuses and say they prefer working for another political party, that we may go back. That's an extreme uh, option and level. We may go back again and then reconsider our relationship with them. There is many legal uh, routes with which we can take to get what we want. But the most important is that we will pray that we don't get to that particular point, that let the writing be done. It's nothing personal. It's a decision that have over 60 lawmakers from the opposition coalition. And we are serious about it because we are concerned and we don't want our children, children to ask us that that time the, the ruling party went into opposition, what did we do to raise it up? And we're trying to do something. So history will record it for us that this PDP must rise up and this PDP must have the kind of legislature that have the ball to rein in members, bring in this discipline, unite everybody, set an agenda and provide credible opposition. Even if you don't win an election, what matters is the credibility of your opposition, the sustainability of your opposition, which will help in enhancing governance. It will even help APC to enhance governance because you look at things critically, not just opposed for the purpose of opposing, but look at them critically and the country will move forward. Are you not happy the way it's happening in South Africa? Are you not happy with what is happening in uh, NDC, uh, 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 the, the, the former president who is about to come back? Didn't you see what happened in Senegal? It mustn't lead to victory, but what matters is the sustainability of it, the quality of that opposition position and the critical thinking you brought forward. That's what PDP needs. Look at the big PDP. Remember those days of Ekweme, Abakarimi, Solomon La, and so on and so forth. What you have today, if those people, some of them are alive today, wouldn't they, wouldn't they have heart attack? Uh, uh. Honorable Ugochinera, thank you so much for joining us on Arise Prime Time.